Greetings everyone and welcome to another edition of Coffee Shop Thursday. Yes, Coffee Shop Thursday. That time when you gather with your friends at the local coffee shop and you expound on your incredible expansive knowledge of scripture and everything you've been talking about in Bible study and and all the things that that go on in church and all the gossip I mean well okay never mind hey it is coffee shop Thursday and just keep this in mind don't be too much of a show-off because then you're gonna find out that they change the day to Friday and they don't tell you okay hey how about that story of Moses? We all know the story of Moses, right? He was placed in that basket and floated down the Nile River when he was a baby because if mom just knew that if the Pharaoh found out, he would kill him. And the basket was discovered by the Pharaoh's daughter. And the Pharaoh's daughter rescued Moses and brought him up as her own son in the right under the nose of the pharaoh so to speak and and we'll see how the story ends a little bit later but that's what we have for today yeah spoiler alert moses goes on to lead the people out of egypt but so you and your friends you're sitting at the coffee shop you're talking about that story because well you talked about it in bible study and uh but, you know, there were a few things you didn't talk about in Bible study. So you, this was your chance to put your incredible biblical knowledge to work. I have a slight confession to make here. I had to look this up, too. So if you feel like you got left out somewhere along the way, I think we all were. You know, part of the story that often gets left out because we learn this stuff when we're little kids for the most part is that the pharaoh had ordered all babies all male babies to be killed why because well i'll be honest with you he was probably simply racist he didn't like this group of hebrew people who had multiplied in the most fertile valley of the nile region and he was just jealous. The scripture says he didn't know anything about the Joseph story. And Joseph's been long gone. No, I don't think that was it at all. I think he was just plain tired of these Hebrew people. And wanted to, to put them under his thumb. And the way he did that was ordering the midwives of the Hebrew people. When that baby was delivered, if it was a male to kill the male on the spot and say, oh, I'm sorry, you know, stillborn, sorry. Well, the two midwives didn't do that. It got back to the Pharaoh that the males were surviving and he said, well, what's going on? I told you what to do. And it's wonderful. And I'll complete the story in a minute. But here's where you step in. You say, hey, they weren't just any midwives. Those two midwives had names. Do you know what their names were? <laughs> Shifra and Pua. Shifra and Pua. That's what their names were. And then you sit back and you grab your cup of coffee and you go, oh, pretty cool, huh? Well, Shifra and Pua. Thank you so much. Two of the heroes, two of the five heroes of this story. Yes, five heroes. And they are all women. So we have Shifra and Pua, who blatantly disobeyed the order of Pharaoh. Uh, so much so that Pharaoh was enraged. And then he ordered all the Egyptian people that if they saw any toddler, infant, Hebrew male, just pick them up and throw them in the Nile River. See, Shifra and Pua had given the story that, you know what, it, it's unbelievable, but these Hebrew women are so strong in childbirth, but by the time we get there, the baby's already born, and we can't kill them. And that's when the Pharaoh said, 
it's time for our good old-fashioned genocide. Throw the male babies in the river. Okay, so a Hebrew woman, she was a Levite. Remember the Levite were the priestly clan of the people. She gives birth and now it comes out a boy. That's just a death sentence. Now she knows he's going to be tossed into the river. So what does she do? She fashions a basket out of papyrus and oils it up, tars it up real good so that it won't leak. Places her infant baby in there and sets him down the river. Hoping and praying that someone will find him before it overturns and he drowns and will raise him as their own. Good news is it happens. It happens because of three more women who are heroes of the story. The first is the Pharaoh's daughter. The Pharaoh's daughter who blatantly disobeys her dad's own orders. Can you believe it? Disobeys, pulls in this baby, and she recognizes that it's a Hebrew baby. You've all watched the Ten Commandments, right? <laughs> You know, because she saw that there was Hebrew cloth inside of that <clears throat> uh, that basket. So, a little girl had been following the flight of the basket, the journey of the basket down the river, had seen all this happen, is standing nearby and goes up to the Pharaoh's daughter and says, I think I know who the mommy of that is. Do you want me to bring her to you? And Pharaoh's daughter says, yes, of course, because now this baby has to be nursed. She can't nurse the baby. She's not at that stage where she can give milk. So the little girl runs back, grabs the mommy, brings it back. The little girl. We don't know her name right now. We will a little bit later in Exodus. Her name's Miriam. She is Moses' sister. And she goes back. And the woman she brings back to nurse Moses is Moses' mother. We find out her name a little bit later too, Jacobed. Oh, wow. What an amazing story. Five women are the heroes of the story. Five women who, who disregard the orders of the Pharaoh who dared to face up to the face of evil power. Shifra, Pua, Jacobed, Miriam, and an unnamed Pharaoh's daughter. All of them working to bring about the salvation of the people of God. The people to whom the promise had been made to Abraham. I will make your name great. I will make your descendants like the sand of the sea. Like the stars of the sky. So many you won't be able to count them. Five women. Who stand up to evil power. What an amazing story we have in scripture. So now as all your friends at Bible study are looking at you. They're jaws drop because you knew all these names go ahead do do one more thing throw one more little tidbit at them while you're at it yeah you know that that papyrus basket that uh, Jacobet had made to put her son into yeah just just remember that basket the word for that is tabat in Hebrew it's the same word as Noah's Ark. Woo! Basket, Ark, the same word, the same vehicle of salvation. God's blessings be with you on this grand and glorious day. I just have to say one thing about these sunny, sunny days. If anyone complains about this summer, other than the pandemic and all the politics that are going on. I mean, we've had more sunny days than I could ever remember in a summer. About the only thing you can complain about 
in our neck of the woods anyhow, is the nine straight days we had of 90 degree weather. Otherwise, it's been awesome. Go out now. Enjoy yourself. Have a marvelous day.